Welcome to PNW Prop Stars, the only Seahawks only gambling show in the multiverse. I am your host, Clinton Bonner, and I am joined by the Montana Seahawker, Mr. Adam Emmert. Mr. Adam, coming at you hot real quick. The four game losing streak is over. We get the W. Are you still riding high as we now head down to Tennessee? Yeah, still flying high a bit, man. Big win over the Eagles. We needed one of those uh, four or five games against the gauntlet there, and we got it. Happened to be the last one. Would have been nice if, I don't know, maybe it was one of the middle ones and broken up a four-game losing streak there. But uh, exciting all the way around. Can't wait to watch the Hawks take on the Titans here this next week. And uh, I've got all the bets to overtake Wilson once again. So, oh. uh, yeah, I'm going three for three this week, boys. I'm calling it right now. I'm Babe Ruth in this. Wow, he's t- calling his shot. And Wilson, I, I, before he calls you out and, and you know gets you gets you all riled up, perhaps, perhaps, although you're you are an even keeled individual, can you win? I have a question for you, uh, Wilson. Can you win the gauntlet in the first game? Certainly not. Can you win the gauntlet in the second game? Third game? Nope. Can you win the M M F and gauntlet in the game versus the Eagles, Wilson? Yes, absolutely. And with my guy right here, Clint and I are repping him today. We got Drew Locke. Drew. We're rocking with Locke. Uh, he's not playing this week, hopefully. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, we're rocking with him. And he got it yeah. done for us. Yeah, I was I was saying to Adam when you were off screen, I was like, look, there's only going to be only gonna be so many times the rest, the rest of my time on earth where wearing a Drew Locke Seahawks jersey uh, unironically might be in fashion. And this is this is the week to do it, right? So <laughs> you, you ran and got yours. I got mine. And Adam's like, maybe I'll get my Gino jersey because he's right. I, I got Gino right behind me there on screen for a reason. He'll be back this week, and I'm excited. Before we head to this week, let's look back at last week. And, all right, the Princetonian of parlays, the, 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 the boy Prince, he does it again. Wilson, plus 60% on the week, up $18.50. Wilson, what do you have to say for your W? Uh, well, not only was I so happy to have those first two bets hit, but just the the time in the game when they happened, it just made it all that much sweeter. That that Kenneth Walker rushing touchdown uh, coming out of the out of the half there that also broke it open for your first down bet, Clint. That that might have been my favorite one, but the Hertz pick too. That was just really sweet. Yeah, you got to love when you're making money and it's tied some big moments like that for yeah. sure. So, and if we're both cashing on that K9, that K9 run where we both hit, well that's just wonderful. So, Adam, I know it hurts hurts the eyes to see this once again, but can you celebrate the moments that got us there? Oh, I'm thrilled for you guys. I'll take this result week in, week out on Prop Stars for the rest of the season if it means that the Seahawks sweep the last 3 games, go to the playoffs and make some noise. Uh, but so I'm excited for you guys. I was a little disappointed that I missed on my second down bet by an yeah. entire half a point. That one Ugh. hurt. Uh, but the Seahawks leading one to six points at the end of one. Um, nope, not even close. So uh, <laughs> that's off to you guys. Well done. Yeah, and I, I was happy. The race to 20 pulled that one out with that JSN. And yeah, then somehow. the extra point, somehow, yeah. some way. That gets there. That was that was lovely. And I, I'm very excited the A.J. Brown one did not hit. I thought, I honestly thought, He'll, he'll get one of them. And two, like, like you were saying, Adam, I love that results. I take, I take an Eagle to do something pretty positive. It doesn't happen. We get the W love that love making money on the big plays. And that's what we do on PNW prop stars sometimes. And we, at least we try every single week. Of course, it is part of the Seahawkers podcast network, five shows every single week, youtube.com slash Seahawkers podcast. Hey, it's the time for giving. So like subscribe and Adam, what else could they be doing if they want to do a little a little extra for the Hawkra in this holiday season? You bet. Get in the flock, guys. Go to uh, the website there and get in the flock. You get to be a member of the Discord on game day, which is fire every single week. Uh, you can also get into the Ring of Honor. And it's a great time all the way around. And look, if you do it, it increases the likelihood of the Seahawks going 3-0 and down the stretch by 17%. So right. don't look That's it up. It may or may not be true, but it uh, feels right to me. 
look, the math uh, checks out. That's it. So basically, you know, only you could prevent forest fires and only you mm -hmm. could help us get the Seahawks to the playoffs. So get in the flock.com, become a member and away you go already. Plus you get the perks. You get to hang out with great, great Seahawks people. It was a lot of fun, Adam, when you were, when you were live at Brandon uh, after this game, turns out winning a heck of a lot better than losing. Turns out our bets are better when we're, when we're winning, not losing. We've got an opponent this week. Yes, we got to go East Coast. Yes, it's Christmas Eve. Yes, it's a 10 a.m. Pacific start. And all those things, I'm not sure they're going to matter. A 5-9 and nine Titans team that is also really banged up. This is a banged up Tennessee Titans team. They have a long list of their some of their best players who are tracking not to play football this Sunday. So we shall see what happens. Let's see how that is reflected in our bets. Wilson, you are up. Bet one, the $10 bet to get us going. You're on the tee box with honors. And where are you taking us? Well, I, I took a fairly conservative bet at minus 145 on first down here, but it just felt so good that I couldn't I couldn't pass it up. And uh, the reason it felt so good, well, it's there's something about this Titan secondary where they just cannot make an interception. They cannot pick the ball off. Ooh. They have four interceptions all year. Gino has thrown a pick nine times. Uh, he hasn't been great protecting the ball this season. But uh, Gino, not to throw a pick or under half an interception, is at minus 145. Um, after getting a little bit of background knowledge on the Titans defense, I really couldn't pass that one up. Wow, four picks all year. The only thing I'm thinking about here, Adam, is is the boy Prince jinxing us. What do you think? Nope, because I am going to tie that into my first down bet as well. Four picks all year for the Titans. That is dead last in the league. Dead last and while Gino does have nine picks on the season it's not like he's been turning the ball over all uh you know Josh Allen there for a stretch or uh, Jalen Hurts you know, Jalen Hurts, Jaylen, Jaylen been, Hurts every game yeah, yeah has been having a rough go with that so uh I really like that so I I do really like that part of the bet uh well that's your entire bet Wilson I'm gonna add <laughs> on to it though for for my first down bet Okay, cool. So a little foreshadowing there. We did bring up Jalen Hurts. I just want to call out the Eagles fans uh, who, like, usually, look, I'm not the biggest fan of Eagles fans because who is? However, they're passionate. They like their team and they're passionate. So I could get behind that typically. After this game with the whole, like, cheat hawks stuff and, like, oh, Hurts' foot wasn't down, look, tell your quarterback not to throw the ball 45 yards downfield when you need about 18 yards. They take a shot downfield like that. You need 18 yards. Look over the middle. You got timeouts. You want to blame somebody, blame your quarterback for putting the ball in danger. Not once, but twice. And I love it. Adam, what you got? Who, who, who's saying that Julian Love's foot wasn't down? Oh, like, my gosh. Yeah, I know you're not on, on the X no, on no, Twitter no, machine. I, just, I, I, that, that, I can't. That baffles me in a way that I can barely put into words. Do you not have <laughs> catfish, guys? Can you not like watch a TV screen and see, oh, look at that. You can see his toe touchdown in two different angles and two different angles. Look, I'm fine. I, I'm fine with Philly fans and like kind of just yeah. the way their general demeanor is. I kind of respect it. Then, but yeah. if you're out there saying that wasn't a legit interception, you're dumb as catfish. Shit. Try better. <laughs> yeah, there was one extra one at the end there where they really do a close up of the foot and looks. It looks like it might just be swooping past the ground. But unlike the other one that you're mentioning, you, you can see like anyway, you can see it like clearly touching. So do better, Eagles fans, and stop complaining. Stop. You, you came up to the PNW, and frankly, you you got to 17. You got stuck. You got stuck in the mud. Our defense stuck you, and we get the W. So uh, go Crimea River. Maybe we'll see you in the playoffs, and DK can do it to you again. All right, I am up on second down because I did okay last week. I do right, like do you to go. You want to do your first down? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll get it. But I'm up on. But I'm up on second down. I'm gonna do my first down. But I'm up on second down. But I'll. I'll. Uh, I'll go backwards here, guys. I'm up on my first down. Second bet. And there is one Tennessee Titan that I do think is gonna have a good game. Let's let me be wrong once again. But let me be wrong out of the gate. I like Tyje Spears to get the ball quite a bit more often this game because uh, they're now eliminated from the playoffs. They got nothing to play for. They're all banged up. He's a rookie. I think they're going to want, want to see a bit more of what he can do. And when he gets the ball, he's outperforming King Henry by a landslide at this point. So I'm going to I'm going to take Ty J Spears' over-under on rushing yards. I'm going to throttle it to 40-plus yards. Gets me to a 
pretty spicy, plus 188 to start this thing up. Remember, I'm in third place. I need to come back these last three weeks. So it is go big or go home time. Ty J Spears, 40 plus yards for the win. That's my first one. All right. Well, uh, we'll see how that goes for you. I know exactly Jack about Tajay Spears. So um, good luck. <laughs> uh, that's the best I can I can say on that one. I have no idea. But with Love Us Being Out, you know it's going to be Tannehill. And, I mean, are they really going to throw the ball around the yard a bunch with Tannehill? I, I would see Derrick Henry getting a bunch of carries in this game. Yeah, I just he's been so so ineffective lately, and they can't block. They can't, and, and Ty J Spears is just that scat back who can create where when there's nothing there. Whereas Henry needs that something to then get going. So he's just he's better formed or better uh, aligned to make make something out of nothing here. Let's see if Vrabel listens to me. He probably does. So I expect Ty J to hit that thing. All right, but Adam, you you mentioned the no INTs for your first down bet. So what are you parlaying with that? All right. So that uh, under 0.5 interceptions for Gino is minus 145. And then Gino to go over 200 yards is minus 290. You parlay those two beauties together and you're at plus 118. So just going a little spicier than I did last week to try to make up a little bit of that lost ground to uh, Wilson here this last week. In look, the Titans are basically in the bottom third in the league in yards per game given up to mm -hmm. quarterbacks at around 220 ish. And yeah, I think Gino coming back with this receiving core and this offense, I, I do think that they are going to get, or Gino's going to pass for over 200 yards. So those two things combined plus plus one eighteen. I don't hate it. I've got some uh, wide receiver bets that basically are banking on Gino having at least a pretty good day and 200 still, underperforming by about, I don't know, 30% or so. Uh, I think about that 25% of what Vegas is saying Gino will reach, or at least 20%. So that's something. I don't mind combining those two things. Wilson, before I go on my second down bet, what do you think? He took he took yours. He added a little bit extra to get to plus 118. You like it or you're selling it? I think it's great. I, I wish I'd uh, come up with that idea because I'm, I'm sort of going in a similar direction with uh, Gino on second down. All right. Well, we have more foreshadowing. Now I'm up on second down. I'll, about to, I'll take it back here. So I mentioned just before that I like some of these Seahawks receivers. You'll hear that throughout the rest of my bets. I'm going to do a little parlay on bet number two. And uh, the Seahawks over under is at 22 and a half. I didn't, at first I liked the over for the entire game. I think it's at 41 and a half. Then I'm like, you know what? I could see this being a really sputtering game from the Titans could be. And I don't want to blow a bet because we play good defense. That would feel icky. So I think the Seahawks will do their part. So over 22 and a half points for us. I'm going to parlay that with DK over four and a half receptions of so receptions total. And that gets me to a pretty healthy, a little bit spicy plus 199. I like what I'm seeing from DK. The volume is consistently there. It's going to be 67 degrees and sunny in Tennessee. A beautiful day for football in December. I think we're scoring points, boys. And if we're scoring points, I think DK is going to get his. So I like combining those two things. Adam, what do you think about my little uh, my little plus 199? Plus, it's fun to say. Okay, give me the two legs again because uh, I was trying to find my second down bet while you were saying <laughs> no, no, no worries. DK at over four and a half receptions, so five okay, receptions right. or more. Mm -hmm. And Seattle over their points total, it's 22 and a half. So 23 or more points, and away we go. Yeah, I do really like the receptions end of thing. I like betting on receptions more than yards because, you mm -hmm. know, you can end up with a uh, you know, bunch of bubbles and you still hit your little receptions mark there. Now, as far as the score goes, I stayed away from total score a little bit in this game just because I don't know why, but the Titans are never all that great. And yet every time we play them, they play us freaking tough. And it's annoying. I'm, I'm tired of them. I don't like them. And, uh, you know, 22 and a half, you would think that they would go over there. But then again, they went up against a pretty poor Eagles secondary last week. I thought they'd score more points than they did. I thought they'd get over 20 and a half. Didn't happen. But, uh, yeah, I'm rooting for you on this one. I, I like I like the idea of the Hawks offense coming out and being a little bit more dynamic. Well, Wilson, did we not get to 20 over 20 and a half last week because of the rain, because of, you know, our man here, lock it up with Drew Locke. 
What do you think was the big hindrance of not getting to that number last week? And does that carry over with this uh, this Titans game? Uh, no, I think the, the answer is unfortunately that it was probably the quarterback position. I, one of my one of my funniest uh, the funniest thing from that game uh, I, I saw this on Twitter, also heard it live, where I, I believe it's it was Aikman. <laughs> Aikman said uh, the analytics say that the the Seahawks should go for it on fourth down here, but that doesn't take into account uh, the Drew Lock factor. <laughs> and, and I'm sure and I'm sure he meant that in uh, in a somewhat uh, you know neutral way, but it really did come out. Uh, quite a bit uh, negative towards Locke. And I think, unfortunately, that was accurate. I mean, think about the last time Geno Smith played quarterback was the Cowboys game, and that was the best offensive game of the year. So, yeah, a bonanza for that one. That was Joe Buck, and I will tell you, Joe. Oh, it was Buck, sorry. Yeah, and Joe, I didn't find it funny, and I still don't find it funny. So, <laughs> so, so take that back, Buck. All right, Adam, you're up on your second down. Where are you going, dude? All right, man. I am betting on the Seahawks to do Seahawks things, and that is <laughs> – the Seahawks to win from behind. So they just have to trail at some point in the game, then win. I think uh, that probably happens because that's what they do. Plus 175. Okay, plus 175. I took a similar bet a couple of weeks ago. I forget what it was. I think it was, oh, it was the, the Cowboys, the one we mm-hmm. should have had where we were down. And that number was huge just because uh, Vegas had them at a, a big favorite too. So it's a, obviously more tempered here at plus 175. Look, here's the thing, and I'll kick it to you, Wilson, for, for some reaction. I am team never defer this year. I talked about it on What If, and not always, but this year and last year, because we kick the darn ball off and we give up points. And often it's seven friggin' points. This Titans team ain't ain't the Eagles and ain't the Cowboys. But do you think we get down in this game at some point? Is it a cheesy field goal? Is it something where our Seahawks are trailing? What do you think? The only thing I can really see happening is them getting a first drive field goal. But I really think, and I'll get into this later in the game, I think the offense is going to start out very strong in this game. And I don't see the Seahawks trailing beyond, you know, maybe early second quarter. I don't see I would, any reason I would hope so. Trail. I would hope so. I want to, we all want that easy, squeezy, just Christmas gift of, of nothing too antsy. And we're just like, holly jolly, that was great. And, uh, and we're, we're exiting, we're flying home with, with another W. But that's, that's easier said than done the NFL. When, when was the last time that happened? By the way, the Giants, like, the I, Giants, because I, 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 I don't a, remember it. Yeah, honestly, just the Giants game. But even but yeah. even that game that Wilson and I were both at <laughs> uh, opposite end zones, even that game, that is a 98 yard spoon uh, pick six away from being a close ball game. We pick them yeah. off the two yard line, one yard line. If they score on that drive, they were marching. They score on that drive different ball game now of course it didn't go that way and 11 sacks later or more sacks to get to 11 later it was a bad day for daniel jones <laughs> with that though um that was that's the one though that that game was pretty much put away after that moment so but with you with you there we don't play that way very often adam so uh either way and and, and the titans are stingy in stupid ways like you were you were calling out right so the recipe is probably not leading there but but uh, I still think we might not trail in this game, but we shall see. All right, Wilson, second down for you. Where are you going? Well, Gino's back and healthy. Um, and like I was saying, the last time he played football, it was one of the best games he's had as a Seahawk. Mm-hmm. One of mm-hmm. the best games the offense has played this year, probably the best game offensively. So I'm just going to take him. This is still fairly conservative with that in mind, but I'm going to take him to just uh, throw over 250 yards. Um, and that gets me plus 140. There's no reason for concern that this Titan secondary is going to dominate in any way in this game. And I think, you know, an above average offensive performance by the Seahawks gets him to that number. I would have hated that bet yesterday. And what has transpired from yesterday to today is that Kenneth Walker didn't practice Thursday. And typically, very, very often, if you're not practicing Thursday and it's not a rest day or something like that, or like, you know, you're having a baby or something like that, it doesn't portend well for you starting on Sundays. Thursdays are a big day. He's got a shoulder injury or whatever it might be. His, his shoulders dinged up. Is it something injectable and he gets back out there and just, you know, go give him hell kid. I don't know. Um, I would have liked, I like it more now with this big question mark on canine. Uh, so Adam, do you think Gino's getting there? And do you think it matters if it's Charbonnet or K9 or doesn't, doesn't really matter versus these Titans? 
doesn't really matter versus these Titans. And I'll tell you why is his name is Abraham Lucas. That's why, mm. like, since he is back and healthy, this offensive line is a different beast. The amount of clean pockets that Drew Locke had to throw from last week was astounding. Like that, we haven't seen that in forever. And that's against a damn good Eagles defensive line. Titans do not have that same personnel. So yeah, I love it, man. I like Wilson sitting on this one. Uh, Gino over 250. He's gonna have all day. Pick apart a bad secondary. You betcha. Well, I do like it. I, I hope it hits. I, I want that just continuation from that Dallas game. Quicker decisions. Trust your guys. Let your let your big dogs go, go, you know, go eat for you. Would be super cool. All right, Adam, that takes us to third down. Where are you going? And did you get over that that special bar we somehow have now placed at third down, that threshold? Uh, no, I have not gotten to a full-on Wilson 300. It's more of a, a Adam wussing out a tiny bit to go with an Adam <laughs> plus a little bit of a wuss out 256. Pretty good. Pretty uh, I good. got uh, JSN to go over three and a half receptions. That's mm -hmm. uh, minus 160. And then the Seahawks to lead by or have any sort of lead coming out of the first. That's plus 130. You combine those, it gets you a plus 256. So if they don't end up trailing in this game, uh, which I think if they do, it would be early. If they don't, this is kind of my cover for that. Uh, them leading the whole way through. So Jackson Smith and Jigba over three and a half. Seahawks to lead at the end of the first. End of the first quarter. Up, up, Seahawks up. The JSN part, I absolutely adore. I'll talk about a little JSN in a second. Talk about a dude who will just get those, get the bubble, get the one or two wide receiver screen touches. Extremely high percentage that, that, that they will be complete. And away you go. And at that point, you get two of those, get two downfield later in the game. And you, you get to your four and, and you're and you're a happy camper. So, okay. Seahawks lead at the end of Q1. Yeah. I mean, look, let's, let's see that. Wilson, do we, you, I think you said earlier that you're a believer that this, the Seahawks team is going to get out strong this week. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, it squares perfectly uh, with my third down bet. So nice, nice. Take it away then. Great. Well, this, the, the story for the Seahawks earlier in this season was great start on offense and especially opening drive touchdowns. That hasn't been the case recently. The number for an opening drive touchdown for the Seahawks has now moved into Wilson 300 territory. Careful. So I'm taking it at 310, the Seahawks to score a touchdown on the opening drive. Nice touchdown opening drive. Yeah. All right. I, I Waldron scripted has been better than Waldron not scripted. And can we learn from that, that, that drive that got us out of the second half against the Eagles? If I had to frame something up and say, Drive of the year, Seahawks football, and I realized it was mo mostly canine, a little bit of Charbonnet, sprinkle of Drew Locke. To me, Adam, that's the drive of the year. So can we come out that way versus these Titans and be like, look, man to man, you're not stopping us today. What do you think? I think there's a high probability of it. This is a good matchup for the Seahawks, especially offensively, I, it, especially with all of the injuries that you had pointed out the Titans are suffering from right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like it. I, I do think that they would score early and often and you know what, uh, Wilson, I like the confidence. I like the confidence in this one and kicking off this last three game stretch the right way scoring on the first drive. I dig it. It would be a lot of fun to get us, to get us out of the gate that way for sure. Whether it's K9, whether it's Sharps or a combination, uh, and Gino leading the way, I will take that. All right. So my third down bet. Boys, like I said, I got I got some catch up to to do here. My first bet plus one eighty eight. My second bet plus one ninety nine. I'm going to uh, let's call it a C bond four hundred here plus four sixty five. Here we go. Here's how, here's how we're getting there. Careful. DK, care careful. DK over four and a half receptions, which is the line I liked earlier, right? JSN over three and a half receptions, and I, I Adam, I know you, I know you're onto that one, and then I still got. Ty J Spears with over 24 and a half rushing yards, which is the line Vegas is setting anyway. So DK four and a half JSN three and a half Ty J Spears 24 and a half. And I think that dude's going to get the ball more than people suspect gets me to plus four sixty five. That was a pretty juicy number. I, everything about, I think Gino's going to have a good day. I think it sets up well against this team. 
I think what we saw in the Dallas games going to carry over like all those things I'm like, well, if those things are true and I think they are, well then our, our best players are going to eat and DK and JSN right now. That's the, that's the weaponry on the outside. So at plus 465, boys, I'm feeling bullish. What could I say? All right, Wilson, I'm going to let you handle that one. Right, like, <laughs> let, what do you, what do you think about that one there? Oh man, I I like your insight on Spears, but who knows? I mean, there's I also do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. There's <laughs> also the distinct possibility that the Titans get behind by quite a few points early in this game and just stop handing the ball off. Um honestly, sure. for four sixty five though, I think it's a pretty good bet. I for at that odds. I mean, I could see you getting burned on the DK leg as well, but uh, for four sixty five, I'd take that. Yeah, I mean DK is I, I hear that and and DK has been pretty much a, a pretty good volume monster like getting he's been there. Most games especially at the last 6 or so, he's getting 5 6 7 receptions. And there was of course the 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 Niners game that's the the Turkey Day game, but kind of throw that one out. That was an absolute <laughs> dog fest anyway. So and the Niners. So but but cool. I am excited about it guys. I think I get back you, into this uh... thing. Big do you, Clinton, do you have like a connection with the Spears family? Uh, <laughs> yes, like, yes. Or, or, or the off, offensive coordinator? Like, where did this Tajay, Taji, whatever the hell his name is, Spears love come from? Like, where, where did, they, where did you find this? Like, wait, so, is this, did you just wake up in the morning and be like, man, I love me some Spears? Like, what's I going just, on here? So like just back to last year watching random college football, like two lanes on, I'm like, this guy's good. And then you hear like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Brett and EJ talk about different players. Like, hey, Ty J. Spears a baller. Like, w- let's see where he goes. And then I, I follow a ton of fantasy football, right? So all year long, they're like, look, he's outperforming. He kind of became, um, oh, Cowboys, Cowboys, Cowboys. Pollard, Pollard, right? Yeah. He, he's kind of become the pot, the Pollard of like two years ago where it's like, look, mm. this dude's going to take over the backfield at some point and you don't need to take over the backfield to get to 24, 25 yards. You just need yep. a few more touches where Henry's averaging next to nothing. This guy's still getting three to four yards a carry when there's nothing there. So I just think Vrabel turns, turns it over and says, all right, dudes, we're out. Let's see what you got, kid. And then see and see what we can do. So that's, that's all. I just have a little, yeah. little hunch, a little hunch at him. That's all. All, all right. right. So that, yeah, a little hunch, a little hunch. That brings us to our fail Mary. And as we know, it is plus 1200 or longer odds. It's one tenth the bet. So only $1, the Sunday rubber, the Sunday scratcher back to the T box. Wilson, you're up where are you going, man. And we need to hit one of these. So are you the man to bring us there? Wilson? Yeah, I think I think this week might just be the one for me. Uh, two plus touchdowns for JSN at twenty two hundred. Let's ride. I love it. I I love it so much. That was that was my original fail Mary. So now I, I oh, now wow. I hate, now I hate <laughs> myself. Um, two touchdowns. It was plus twenty two hundred. Is that right? Yeah. Two two for two twenty two. Yeah, two touchdowns. Twenty two hundred. I like the idea of. I mean, it's fun anyway. But JSN just catching a little fire as the as we go down the path, you know, get down the uh, final stretch here, and not a great Titans team. So, Adam, what do you think, dude? I know it's only a dollar, but look, I, I'll say it: JSN is really starting to come on here towards the end of the season, and he's getting more and more involved. And then, obviously, with the big catch last week, um, I, I do see that all of us are betting around wide receiver numbers for the Seahawks this week, and I, I think there's a reason for that. Uh, and that being that the Titans defense just isn't that great, especially when they're as banged up as they are. So, I mean, for a $1 flyer, hell yeah, man. Yeah, get after it. Be super cool. Wilson, this is what I envision. He scores the first touchdown of the game on the opening drive. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. And I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why, Clinton. Because Tyler Lockett is the first TD score of this game for plus 1,200. Wow, That's there what- you go. There you go. Yeah. All right. So plus yeah. right on the nose. Love it. Jumps right in plus 1200 for Lockett to lock it up and get himself the first touchdown. It's been a couple of weeks where mm-hmm. again, another story that might be cool, right? It's like, we've, it's been a few weeks of, all right, just lock it on the descent. He had the good game a couple of weeks ago. He was the better player against the Niners second time around. He was kind of the bread and butter player. Um, and it's still Tyler Lockett. It's not like he's, he's not suddenly bad. He's, he's not right. JSN's getting a little more shine right now, but Lockett, he could obviously get open and, and 
whatever. This is, again, a very banged up team. They're missing some of even their better cornerbacks out there. So I'd love to see Lockett come down with the first one. That would be pretty cool. All right, except for, oh, so how about that? Lockett with the first, JSN gets the second and third. Is that a deal, boys? That's cool with me. <laughs> yeah, I dig it. Yeah. Thumbs up across the board. All right, so I've got my fail, Mary. Here it is. I've been leaning into DK, leaning into JSN. If I throttle these things a little bit, I can get to plus 12, 16. So what am I throttling? I need DK to get to eight receptions, JSN to get to five receptions. That's it. So just a big day from our big guys. I think we're going to get the four and a half, three and a half. I really do. Would, it, would I be shocked if they're like, hey, look, what we saw from DK in the last drive, why don't we start that way? You know, why don't we like try to get him going with three or four receptions in the first drive? I watched some of the Rams last night. Puka Nakua, drive one is done, two receptions and a touchdown. And then the next drive, he's like at five receptions. It just, just keeps on every drive. That dude, that dude's getting just getting getting the ball thrown his way. So look, we got to hopefully treat DK as that alpha. And after what we saw in the last two minutes of the game, I'm thinking that might be the the catalyst to be to to give the ball to the big guy. I hope so. I hope so. It'll be just cool to see as well. Also, Adam, you had said we really didn't go with many, um, you know, running back part anything for our Seahawks running back wise. It's also because they're kind of off the board right now. There's no there's no bets available. Mm -hmm. I was looking earlier this week or even this morning. I'm like, oh man, I'd love to get some canine bets based on his last performance as well. But we got to take the bets as we see them. On, on Friday as we record. So, well, this is Christmas Eve. So are there any plans where, where y'all going to be? Wilson, are you home? Are you uh, at, at some, some other house? Where are you going to be? No, I'll be home for this one, which will be great. Nice. How about you, Adam? Are you in the hobo shack at range? Are you, you on the range? Where are you going to be? Uh, it's a little hard telling not knowing. I should probably call my mom, see what's going on. Maybe have to drive up to Kalispell here. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, I After doing Santa Claus pictures for the better part of a decade, um, don't really much care for this holiday. Uh, I could go with <laughs> I, I, and I also heard, didn't you get sucked back in? Didn't you have to go do something at the mall? Like, like very, like about yeah, Christmas so, pictures. Yeah. The, uh, a lovely woman took over the Santa booth cause she just loves it. And uh, a number of years ago and, um, she's done great, but the whole system is a janky ass system <laughs> that I invented like an O3, like that, that all goes together because you could buy a system to do it. You had to make it up. And uh, she finally had something go down that she couldn't quite handle on her own. So, uh, yeah, so I drove the three and a half hours up there and uh, spent about an hour, got it fixed, got her rolling. And uh, so that's good. Uh, I even took I even took a Santa Claus picture while I was up there of a group of uh, teenagers. So. Um, still had it. I, I still nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> nailed it. You, know, you kept, captured that light like only. Now what about only you, man? What are you doing for Christmas? So Christmas Eve, I'm gonna take. We're gonna take my dad out for like an early day thingy, like a breakfast brunch thing. It's good for his deal. And then we got some great friends who are actually Buffalo Bills fans, awesome people that live in town, and they just do like an open house Christmas Eve where like there's meat roasting and there's fire and there's there's just booze flying around. So I'm gonna have my phone. I'm going to have my earbuds in. I'm going to be getting my libation on, getting holly jolly and watching the Seahawks here while I just cheer with uh, a bunch of folks from my town that I, I actually rather enjoy being around. So it's, that'll be a lot of fun. And then Christmas up to my uh, my wife's sisters, go see that side of the family and eat, eat and drink some more and all that good stuff. So pretty local, pretty low key. I'm just excited to be like around a fire with some good beers and the, the the fact that I can do that and still watch the Seahawks right here, watch them right here, crystal clear. It's amazing. So I'm fired up for that as well. So it's going to be going to be a great Christmas. And of course, hang with the family and all that jazz. So it'll be fun. We need to get back on that plane and we need, we need to get this W. I don't think that could be an excuse. I don't think there's a, we just cannot lose this game again. It could be close. I don't really care. There's, I, there's other, some talking heads like, well, we need to dominate this game. It's like, I think we will, but I also don't care. I, I don't know if you guys have a take. If they like, win by 21-20 and we happen to pull it out, Adam, do you do you give a rat's ass? Or is that just like, nope, that's, that's a W. Just dubs, baby. I don't give a crap <laughs> about nothing right now except for dubs. And look, I know there's a subsect of the 12s here that was a little disappointed with the victory last week. Weird people, um, that's, uh, that's tough to wrap my head around. I know Clinton, you kind of feel the same way. 
Uh, and I know for a fact that Wilson's not uh, in for uh, voluntary losses. So, um, yeah, uh, I just want a dub. I don't. I I just don't care what it looks like. Uh, the only thing that I care about what it looks like is how many playoff games they win. That's the only thing I care about. Yeah, it, let, let's win them all. Let's win all the playoff mm-hmm. games we get into. Wilson, just because we're, we're here and we're, we're chatting about it. Yeah, there was this discussion on a different Seahawks podcast that shall rename will will remain nameless. And they asked some of the hosts, would you rather win out and get into the playoffs or lose out and let the chips fall where they may with like regime change that could happen and stuff like that? And multiple hosts were like, yeah, you know, I'd actually rather just lose out. Can you can you square that in any sort of way or are you firmly what the hell are they talking about? You know, I I actually don't know who you're referring to, um, so. It doesn't matter to me to say this. Uh, they're losers. If you don't, if you don't want to win, you should not. If you don't want the team to win, don't be a fan. If you don't want to go to the playoffs, don't be a fan. You care at that point. You care about your pushing your agenda. You care about being, you know, the smarter one who's thinking, hey, maybe we should lose all these games. You play the games to win. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Hello. <laughs> yeah. It it's just one of those things where like you cannot win the whole thing unless you get to the playoffs. And so at this point get to the playoffs and then and then cool we beat detroit already we barely lost to the cowboys should have beat them we just beat the eagles and we played people could look and say well the delta between us and the niners is still huge yeah it's it's legitimate it's not like we're not trying to be a pollyanna and with that we still play the 49ers i think tougher than most of the other teams did and last time we did it with our backup quarterback so Let's just keep on marching at it. Let's let's see. And then, by the way, the Rams actually are pretty freaking good. Turn, turns out the Rams are pretty good because I will say this one more time, put it into the universe. Matthew Stafford, not Brock Purdy, should be the MVP of the league this freaking year. They're going to make the playoffs. They're playing the Giants next week. They're winning that game. And they're probably going to play the Niners in a game that don't, don't mean nothing to the Niners. So it'll probably be a two-week bye for the Niners, most, most likely. They're going to make the playoffs. Matthew Stafford over Brock Purdy. I have no problem saying that he's a much better quarterback. That's my take. Adam, are you on the Stafford wagon? Um, I'm going to go with neither for MVP. How about that? And not because Fine. they're not deserving, nothing like that, but because I don't want to see a Niner or a Ram <laughs> as the MVP of the league. Josh Allen. Gross, Josh that, Allen. Dude. Gross. Gross. GR uh, double gross, dude. No. <laughs> All right. So Wilson, Josh Allen for MVP. We cool there? No, I'm going with Lamar, and you're going to see why on Christmas Day when he delivers a beautiful present to all the Seahawks fans with a great win in Santa Clara. That is the way. That is the way right there. All right, boys. And with that, there's only one thing left to say. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Go Hawks.